Okay, so thank you, Eva and Ilo, for, for inviting me to give this talk. And also thank you to, to Daniele Aritadile for organizing uh, the conference and for all the time he has invested in, in that. Um, okay, I want to talk about the collective dynamics of networks of QIF neurons, of quadratic interval amplifier neurons. And in particular, I would like to focus on the influence of the spike resetting on, on the collective dynamics of these networks. And um, I'm in this, in this session about, uh, about uh, neural field models of, uh, sorry, about um, neural mass models or, or um, um, mean field theory. And, and I will use a mean field model to, to investigate that. Um, excuse me. Can... It was it was perfect before, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sorry. Okay. Um, let me start with the quadratic interval fire model. Uh, this is the this is the, the definition of this model. It's a it's a first order or differential equation, um, which describes the evolution of the membrane potential of a neuron. Uh, this eta represents some external current that, that is receiving this neuron. And here I represented, uh, and, and this, this function is parabolic. So you see here the parabola. When this eta is a negative, this, parabola, this function here has two zeros. One of them is this uh, stable fixed point, and the other one is this unstable fixed point. This represents the resting state of the cell, and this represents the excitability potential of the cell. In this figure, here you see the, the, the time course of a simulation in which this cell receives now an extra input, okay, this periodic input, and it shows that um, the neuron can integrate inputs, and when this, and when the, and when the voltage um, reaches this threshold value, the neuron, um, Produces a spike, and the and um, and then since and then um, the membrane voltage um, diverges, and it has to be reset to a new value. This is what I represent here. Well, this is this is a, fig a figure adapted from the book of this cabbage. <clears throat> and this reset value is below the resting value. One can take this peak and reset values to be realistic. Um, and to have um, dimensions, and and okay, and typically that's the way the people model this uh, QIF model. When eta is positive, then this parabola doesn't well, this function doesn't have zeros, and then the neuron becomes an oscillator. So the, its membrane voltage is going to this peak value constantly, and then it's reset again and again and again, and it becomes an oscillator. Okay, the, there is a there is a uh, correspondence between the quadratic interval amplifier model and the so-called theta neural model. If these peak and reset values are taken to be at infinity, so the QIF model um, reaches infinity in finite time, then the, the QIF um, can be um, formally transformed into the so-called theta neural model using this transformation of variables that was proposed by Erwin Trout and Kopel. Um, then um, this this is a this is so-called phase model because now the um, the um, the cell is not described by a membrane potential but by a, by a phase. Okay, and this um, transformation of variables uh, maps the real line on the on on this circle. <clears throat> okay. Um, now I want to go to um, the collective dynamics of, of, of networks of these, of, these, of these neurons. And I want to focus on a, on a recent theory that has been um, developed originally by Ott and Antonsen in, this, in their celebrated paper of 2008. Um, and this theory um, allows to obtain an exact low-dimensional low description of a network of Uramoto oscillators. 
Okay, these oscillators are coupled via sinusoidal coupling of the phase differences between pairs of oscillators. Um, the theory allows to, as I mentioned, allows to obtain a mean field description in terms of a mean field parameter that is the Kuramoto of that parameter. Later, after the original paper of, of Ott and Antonsen, it has been shown that the, the Ott Antonsen theory also holds for other phase models that are relevant for neuroscience. For instance, it holds for Winfrey, for so-called Winfrey oscillators, which are pulse coupled. They are not coupled now with sinusoidal pairwise phase differences, but they are coupled with pulses. And this is highly relevant when one wants to model um, chemical transmission. And the model also has um, PRCs. But what is more relevant for us now is that this theory also holds for um, networks of pulse coupled theta neurons. Okay, this was shown by Luke Barreto and So in 2013, and this model has been uh, investigated and extended and refined by, by, by Carlo Lang, by Steve Coombs, and, and by many others. Um, but in computational neuroscience, um, um, there, there, there it, is, it, is, it is often, um, so mean field models are often formulated in terms of, um, of uh, they are not formulated in terms of a mean field quantity that is, is the promoter of the parameter, but they are, they are formulated in terms of activity or of firing rates. And these models are the so-called firing rate models or wheels from or neural mass models or neural field models. They have many different names. These models are generally heuristic or they are derived under um, approximations, but they are never exact. And um, and then one may wonder whether these mean field descriptions that are exact could be reformulated or written in terms of or related to this, to this class of models. So starting with the QIF model, it is indeed possible to derive um, an exact firing rate equation for a network of QIF errors. And actually, this description can be linked to the description in terms of the Kuramoto of the parameter via a conformal map. So this is the unit um, disk where the Kuramoto of the parameter evolves. So, and this is a new, say, um, complex number, which has one component is the, so the, the, the imaginary axis here represents the mean voltage and the real axis here represents the firing rate. So this W is composed of firing rates and mean voltages. And then, this, um, this uh, conformal map links these two descriptions. In particular, when this C has modulus one, say when all the theta neurons have exactly or are exactly at the same state, then um, we evolve in this, in this, in this um, circle here, and then this transformation reduces to the transformation I explained earlier, and that is the transformation that links QIF and theta neurons. So this can be seen as a generalization of this transformation for this mean field um, order parameter, for these order parameters, the Kuramoto order parameter and this order parameter based on firing rates and then potentials. And now let me explain briefly how to derive these mean field, uh, these, these firing rate models. So now imagine that we have a population composed of many, of an infinite amount of, of, of QIF neurons, and they all have the same eta. Okay, and, say, and suppose that this eta is now positive, so that this parabola now, uh, so that this function now doesn't have any zero. So um, neurons are constantly firing, but one can, um, but we, um, but we, but it turns out that this, the, the, but this density can be stationary. So even though these neurons are constantly firing, one can imagine that what, there, there exists a density that is fixed around the minimum of this, of this parabola and it has a certain width that we will call x and this density in order for this density to be stationary it should um, be inversely proportional to the speed of the neurons which is given by d squared so it should be inversely proportional to d squared 
and then x and y, y is the center of this distribution and x is, uh, is the width of this distribution. And this is a Lorentzian distribution. <clears throat> In general, these x and y's are going to depend on eta, okay? And then we will have many different ethers. Um, in our theory, we need to adopt the thermodynamic limit, but we also need to adopt the limit of V going to infinity. So we are not resetting and, and thresholding the cells at finite values, but at infinity. So this density is defined from, mi from minus infinity to plus infinity. So the voltage is going from minus infinity to plus infinity. But still, in simulations, we um, take these um, as finite values, and therefore one needs to think of this theory as an asymptot as asymptotically valid in the limit when v when this reset and threshold values go to infinity okay and in the limited in finitely many cells okay now if one considers this um these these ansatz or this or this density it is um, easy to compute the firing rate by multiplying the, the so d dot by the density and performing the limit uh, VP going to infinity, P is the peak, is the peak of, uh, of the spikes. Um, and then it's very easy to compute this limit and it gives X. So X divided by, by this, but essentially the firing rate for each value of eta is given by the width of this, of this, of this distribution. Whereas the mean membrane voltage um, can be, can be um, calculated integrating from minus VR to plus V to VP, the density times V. So this is the first moment, that would be this integral would be the first moment of this distribution, if this, if this was minus VR to VR, okay? Let, 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 me, let me now explain what is this AVR here, but um, for, for now on, so, so you see that this integral corresponds to the first moment of the distribution, but now one has to, but since this, since this um, distribution is Lorentzian, it has um, heavy tails. It cannot. It, this distribution does not have finite moments. So one one needs to adopt this this limit. So this is the principal value. This is the Cauchy principal value. So the mean voltage is given by this integral. And now, notice that um, VP is written as a constant. This constant. I wrote, I wrote this as a constant. This is a real positive number. Okay. That that multiplies VR. Thus far, only the case A equal 1 has been considered. So, in the theory that I will now develop, only the case from minus VR to VP has been uh, taken into account, but one can also perform this integral in, in for, for these arbitrary limits, okay? So, taking the peak and the reset values at different places, and this will um, and this will account for 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 the effect for the effect of asymmetric resetting of the cells. <clears throat> so let me show you um, how the spikes look like. So this is a simulation of the QIF model, and now I cut the spikes at 100 and I reset them at minus 100. In this case, this asymmetry parameter, which is the ratio between VP and VR, is one. But these spikes, which look a bit more say, um, realistic, um, have A equal 4, so this is four times larger than this, okay, in models. This is what I'm now trying to describe. <clears throat> so, the, the mean voltage now is, as I said, is, is, is this integral, but this integral can be written in two parts, so it can be separated in two, in two parts, okay, it can be separated in this uh, limit, in the limit of this integral. This will give capital Y, so this is the center of this distribution, this gives this number here, if one performs this integral in a, in a, in a say, symmetric, in a symmetric, um, with symmetric limits, one will get this Y with this, but then we have this extra factor that here that can be evaluated. And then we get that the mean voltage consists of this Y plus an extra term that depends on x, and x is the firing rate. So the mean voltage now is not simply the, the mean of the distribution, but it's also, it also depends on the, on, the, on the firing rate. And this logarithm, this natural logarithm of A, controls 
the, um, uh, the, com the, the contribution of this term. Okay, if A equals one, the spikes are symmetric and this term is not here and then the mean voltage corresponds to the mean, to the center of, the, of, uh, of this Lorenzian distribution. But if not, then we have an additional term. <clears throat> now, um, let, me, let me very briefly explain how to obtain the, mean, the firing rate equations. We compute the mean firing rate by integrating this x, this excess for all etas. So this is a distribution of, of the inputs that, that the neurons receive. So this is uh, a source of quenched noise in our, in, our, in our system. And then we will have also the mean membrane potential that is this integral over all, over all these. And, and since V is composed of Y and X, this integral corresponds to these two integrals here. And now um, the procedure to, to um, obtain the firing rate model is, is standard. So we write the continuity equation, we plug the Lorentzian ansatz, which, is, which corresponds to the Otantons and ansatz, but in a different space. So the correspondence between the Otantons and these Lorentzian ansatz is the, this conformal map that I was talking about. And then we consider a distribution here, which is also Lorentzian. And it's centered at some eta bar and it has a width, a certain width delta. Okay, this delta will measure the amount of heterogeneity in our population and this is the receive. If this is Lorentz, I, I, I choose this distribution to be Lorentzian because then these integrals can be solved by um, applying the Cauchy's um, residues theorem. And, and it turns out that only one, the value of, the only relevant value of eta is the value of eta at the poles of this distribution, okay? And that's why we get a strong dimensionality reduction. And the model that we, that we find is this one, where here we have the mean firing rate, and here we have the mean membrane. And then you see that the, the, the asymmetry parameter enters in three different places. So it looks like very non-trivial, no? the effect of, that this asymmetry has on the, on the dynamics, on the, on the collective dynamics of these models, but it won. So you see that it affects the, the membrane. So, well, it, has, it enters here and it also shifts the distribution of currents and it also enters into it also enters into, into that part of the equation. But if one defines this, if one uses this auxiliary variable that I will call VA, which is not the voltage, it's an auxiliary variable that contains V and R, and it reduces to V when A is one, then the model turns out to be this model that do not contain A's anymore, okay? This is exactly the model when there is symmetric resetting, but substituting VA by V. And this says that there is no qualitative change in the dynamics of the model if one introduces this asymmetry in the coupling, in the in the in the firing of the cells. Okay, so um, this is this is not so good, but um, well, or or perhaps yes, but so the result this result is not offering anything new, so there there are no qualitative differences between the dynamics. But in this model, I didn't introduce synapses. So now I will model um, chemical synapses and electrical synapses. So I will couple the cells, okay? Chemical synapses, I will model them as um, current-based synapses. So you know that current um, chemical synapses are uh, connected virtually all neurons. They are directional. They can be either excited or inhibitory. They have relevant time delays that relevant for the dynamics they may have, but here I won't go into that. And what is very important is that they are all or not. So they, once they are, one, uh, when the cell fires, then these, 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 um, these synapses are activated in contrast with electrical synapses, okay? Electrical synapses are common among inhibitory neurons only. They generally are symmetric, they are instantaneous, and they are always on. Okay, because they connect, they are gaps between the, between the, uh, they are gap junctions between the, the membranes of, 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 of different cells. And therefore, um, they are, the, so the two cells are constantly uh, receiving currents from the other cells, okay? Especially when there are spikes. <clears throat> 
Um, the firing rate equations with um, chemical and electrical coupling have been already derived, first by Carlo Lang and then by Pietra et al. Um, in the case of symmetric resetting. And so this is the microscopic model. This is an ensemble of QIF neurons. Here I put the chemical coupling, which is mediated via the firing rate, the mean firing rate. And this is the mean, and, and this is the electrical coupling, which is mediated via the mean library voltage. And then um, the corresponding firing rate equations are these ones, where the chemical coupling appears here in the, in the mean in the mean voltage, and it shifts actually the distribution of voltages, and surprisingly, the um, the effect of electrical coupling it doesn't enter here. It doesn't it doesn't have a diffusion, so it, it doesn't have this form as a diffusion here, but it enters in the R dot equation, and it tends to reduce R, and this means that it tends to reduce the distribution of voltages favoring the appearance of, of symptom. <clears throat> so it tends to um, um, equalize the membrane voltages of all sides. So this is, a, this, is a, this is a nice result, but this um, doesn't, um, this doesn't, uh, this model doesn't explain a number of results that have been um, observed in computational models. In particular, this is a, a spikelet of a, of a QRF neuron so this is uh, the membrane potential of a postsynaptic uh, neuron and how it responds to a spike of a presynaptic neuron due to the presence of an electrical synapse for different values of this, of this asymmetry parameter. And you see that when A is one, when the spikes are symmetric, so, this, um, so the spikelet has a clear, um, say, positive component, but also a long-lasting negative component, but this is like strongly um, modified when we change A. And therefore, we expect that A has a large impact in networks with, uh, with electrical synapses. And this is, not a, this is not surprising. This is already known. Um, and it has been investigated in, in many computational studies. Um, and these studies, um, computational and theoretical studies, and say that synchrony is crucially affected by the shape of the spikes. And moreover, that the effect of electrical and inhibitory synapses may so sum linearly. And we don't, we don't see that in that model, right? So we see that um, electrical and chemical synapses are acting in different places in the equation. So now we um, derive the corresponding um, firing rate equations that include this asymmetry in the, in the resetting. And we find the model that we had earlier, but now we have this extra term in this auxiliary variable, okay? So this is now not the mean membrane voltage, it's this auxiliary variable, but you see that electrical synapses now enter, or the effect of electrical synapses also enters in this part of the equation, and it sums or it adds to chemical coupling. That's why I say that um, electrical synapses introduce this sort of a virtual chemical coupling due to the presence of a symmetry setting and this explains um, the results a number of results but, uh, but especially this one of, of Peuty et al that electrical coupling may compete or cooperate linearly with inhibition this is the phase diagram that one can obtain analytically from these equations so these lines these red lines here are hot bifurcations and these are sneak bifurcations um, this, uh, these boundaries separate the region of synchrony, so this is synchrony from the region here where there is no synchrony. And this is the mean input that the neurons receive, and this is the strength of electrical um, coupling. So this is for um, A smaller than 1, so the spikes are more inhibitory. This is the symmetric case that has been already analyzed, and this is the um, spikes that have a, a threshold, um, a peak, that is larger than the, than the reset. And you see that um, these, these, um, these spikes have a much lower region of, of synchrony. And this um, explains the results again of Feldy et al, but now of a different paper, that electrical synapses may favor or impede synchrony depending on the 
Let's say, and the resetting of symmetry. And finally, let me show you um, results of simulations. Um, I took um, here, I consider eta to be one and g to be 2.5, like here in this cross here, and I'm changing the value of a. Okay, so in the first row, I show you a equal one fourth, um, and the peak value now is 100. And you see that um, we don't have oscillations here, we don't have synchrony we will, because we are outside this outside this area. Okay, and in the the black um, the black curve corresponds to simulations of the QIF network, and the red um, curve corresponds to Faraday equations. Then, as a is increased, we enter into the region of oscillations, and the amplitude of, this, of these oscillations is increasing. And then you see clearly how the model deviates from the so how the network simulations deviate from the from the firing rate equations. And this deviation is essentially um, well. There is a clear a clear um, difference in the in the in the period of these oscillations because now we are resetting the cells earlier. Okay, they don't reach infinity. They reach 100, and then then and then we reset them at minus something. Okay, and then but then we see how these simulations or the agreement improves as we increase the um, the peak value uh, at which we reset the cells. Okay, and that's the last slide, and um, I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ernest, for your talk. There was a long time ago a question, I'm sorry, but we decided to answer them at, uh, <laughs> at the end of the talks. So there's a question by Tom Burns, what happens to the density of membrane potentials if the threshold or reset potentials are variable or even probabilistic, especially over time? So if you consider adaptation, for example. Um, can you repeat the question? How? What you, you can also read it, but I can repeat it. No, no, so no tell me, tell me again. Sorry. So, what happens to the density of membrane potentials? Yes. If the threshold or reset potentials are variable over time or probabilistic, so if you consider adaptation, oh. for example. The answer is that I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't analyze this case. Um, well, maybe this case could be could be um, could be say simulated, introducing a, introducing a, an external current that is that is oscillating perhaps, and then we are we are we are okay approaching the threshold or going away from the threshold periodically, mm. and then what we have seen, for instance, is 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 that if you introduce a periodic current, um, you can find, for instance, collective chaos in the, in the model um, with two equations. I mean, you, um, yeah, for instance, that, I don't know. <laughs> but adaptation, I didn't, well, I think there is, there is um, a group that, that investigated this model with, with spike frequency adaptation, uh, but now I don't remember what happens. There is a second remark and question by Marc de Combs. So mm -hmm. hi, thank you for your very nice talk. Oh. This is not a question. So, did I understand <laughs> correctly that you make Lorentzian assumption throughout? Twi twice. Twice. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> yeah, you, you use this Lorentzian all the time. Um, yeah. Um, Right, we have uh, we have uh, we assume that the that the that the density is Lorentzian, and this assumption is is uh, is because the the density must be inversely proportional to the speed of the neurons. <clears throat> To, to for for the density to be stationary, but then there is another there is another say trick uh, something different which is a trick actually that is that one needs to solve this equation in order this this integral sorry in order for the um, 
continuity equation to become low dimensional. So you see that this X here, which is the firing rate for each eta, um, they depend on they depend on all etas. And therefore, in principle, these, these um, and continuity equations are in finite dimension also. They contain all etas. So we have an infinite amount of, of, of coupled um, continuity equations each for each eta. So we, one for each eta. And therefore, one needs to, so one need, the, the, this trick was proposed by Otten Tantonsen, and, the, and it's, and if you select, and the trick is to use the, the Cauchy theorem. And since these, the, the Lorentzian distribution has a single pole, then well, one can, one can, one can, well, it has two single poles, but one can, one can solve this integral by, by, by complex integration around one of these poles, and then one reduces the dimensionality to two equations. Okay, that's the, that's the idea. So, Mark, your question is much longer. I didn't read all of it. Are you happy with ah. this answer and would? Would, okay, because I, I think that we all also would like to, to have a, a short coffee break. Okay. <laughs> so right. um, okay. I propose to, to stop the session here. Okay, okay. I yes. can take it up later. Perfect. Yes.